Quick start here, a 13 to 6 lead for the Hawkeyes, who had a 10 nothing run in the blink of an eye to jump out in front. Dave O'Brien, Rebecca Lobo, and Holly Rowe with you. And now the Hawkeyes with a turnover. They came in as the number six team of the country in the end, number two. Iowa has had success early in this game, getting stops and doing this. Watch how fast Caitlin Clark pushes the ball up the floor. And always more than one body on her at a time. Tangle and a foul, a whistle here, 531 to go in the first. Well, the first meeting was on February 9th in Bloomington. It was pulsating in front of a record crowd of about 13,000. That game had 14 lead changes, 11 ties. And that jumper will go. And looking for Mackenzie Holmes to really start to get rolling. The seniors had a spectacular career, 23 and 7. That's her average coming into this one. with the bounce down into the lane and a whistle on the play Stokey will take the hit and head to the line which is not necessarily a great thing for the freshman Parrish with the personal attack her see if they can get her into a little bit of foul trouble in this game Stokey Iowa Gatorade high school player of the year out of Washington High over in Cedar Rapids. I love the way this young freshman plays. She runs the floor so well This is the area of her game however where she really needs to improve and that's at the line Any sign of jitters early on you played in so many big games In front of crowds like this on national television, but you've got two teams that know how to play in this environment Yeah, I think Iowa right now is feeding off it The question is can they sustain it as this first quarter continues to go on? Clark, there she goes again. Yes! They talk about range. It's limitless for her. Dave, there's just no one like her. No one like her in the women's game, college or pro. 
The comparisons to Steph Curry keep on coming, don't they? And they are legit. When you talk about the range across midcourt, she is in shooting range. In transition, Martin, nice move there, and takes the hit as well. Kate Martin, she's been a real factor early here. This is why you have to guard Caitlin Clark even before she crosses half court. What's that, about 26 feet? When she's going to her left and in rhythm, she's going to drain it, and it energizes the crowd and her team. And what else can she do? Just a legendary career. Martin for the three-point play and knocks it down. The average three-pointer for 26-plus, the longest in Division One. I. I mean, to understand that the three-point line is 22, so four feet <laughs> behind. Berger with a pull-up pop. Yes. Here's Clark to launch. Got a good, clean look. Donato had it taken away. Laura McNeil gets it off for Berger. She wants to push it. Chloe Moore McNeil with a kick out and a long run coming. And yes, Davis will set it up. Lisa Bluter on the sideline. With 38 years as a head coach. Up and in for two. Stolke, I know you really like her. She's a powerful player. And she just sprints the floor hard every time, puts pressure on the defense in transition. 21-13, Iowa. Looking to knock off the number two team in the country, Holmes. Yes! So what do you do if you can? You step out, give yourself a little bit of room. Why off for a quick start. Has that shot deflected? Good defense there by Garzon. Scalia outside. She can be a dangerous scorer. Recently at 24 against Ohio State. Whistle there. With 151 to go in the quarter. Got that basket. And so she has drifted out, as you said, Rebecca. But right now she's got to get a new contact lens in there. She's trying to go to work if she can see. <laughs> and a three-point play. Davis. And. And a foul here by Berger. Bit of a bailout there. She picks up number one. One of the big things when Caitlin Clark is out of the game, she's coming back in now. You notice how much more time comes off the shot clock? Yes. How, much, how many more times Iowa has to switch sides of the floor to try to get an open look? 12 seconds left, though. You get your big guns back out here. Clark and Sonano. Berger, by the way, picking up number two. Last seconds of the quarter. In for Clark. Trying to make a move on the drive. Gets it in. Norm McNeil will dribble out the final seconds of the quarter. So it ends on an uptick for Iowa. It certainly started that way with a burst for the Hawkeyes right out of the gates. Underway here in the second. Great to have you alongside. Rebecca Lobo, Dave O'Brien, and Holly Rowe. The jumper coming, and that's going to be in and out by Scalia, but... Tough rebound underneath, batted away. Once again, controlled by the Hoosiers as they crash the glass. And trailer 23 18. Holmes draws the double. Parrish through the lane for two. Really good job attacking the defense that was in rotation because of the double team on Holmes. Sydney Parrish has had some big games. She had 24 against North Carolina. 18 and 7 against Penn State, so she can show up. Here's Martin, who's off to a hot start and continues with a triple. She's got 11 points. Kate Martin has been in, in a little bit of a shooting slump after starting the season on fire from three, and vitally important because of the attention Caitlin Clark gets for her wing players to be able to hit from three. One of the five returning starters from a year ago, Sky on the money. I want top five five. Mark's really feeling it and close but can't convert. Especially for Indiana with Grace Berger on the bench with two fouls. So important for them to stay as attached as they can. Play through Mackenzie Holmes. She needs to see the weak side. Needs some help. Threw it away. Picked up by Clark. In transition. Marshall, yes. Big time pressure by the Hawkeyes.
Warren McNeil gets a look. Yes. They miss Grace Berger. They miss Grace Berger on the floor right now to settle everything down for them. She's at the table ready to check back in. Indiana forces the turnover. Parrish on the bounce speed. Scalia, yes. Well run break. Indiana 9 and 0 against top 25 opponents. Long range and around and out. Picked off by Scalia. Arizona will back it out. Shot clock at 15. Rolling Holmes up for a screen. Iowa's defense has been suffocating, but that time, Moore McNeil beat it. I like the decision, though. Bring the pins and Holmes out. Get her in on-ball action. Martin again to penetrate. And draws the contact. Many more honors, obviously, to come. Meanwhile, Cade Martin at the line. And Martin was able to get a great look because Sanano, when the double team came, looked opposite wing. Terrific with the basketball. Holmes trying to muscle away, and that's a traveling violation. So 32 29 Iowa. Indiana with just three turnovers so far. Clock catches, fires, and swishes. Great decision. Moore McNeil out of the game. She's Clark's primary defender. You set a screen for her. When you think of greatness in terms of that, you think of Sue Bird, Diana Tarazi, Courtney Vandersloot, and then to me, Caitlin Clark. Well, Holmes once again drawing all sorts of pressure and lost the basketball. So Indiana kicks it back to the Hawkeyes. Indiana with a 14-game winning streak on the line. Clark on a penetration and a whistle. And she hit the deck. And a little bit slow to rise, but on her feet. Talk about games against the top 25 and stepping up against the best opponent. This is unbelievable. And whether it's top 25, whoever they're playing, of course the game plan when you go against Iowa is to slow down Caitlin Clark as much as you can. As much as you can. Nobody's been able to do it. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, she grew up playing against boys. She said she played in the boys' league until she was in fourth grade. She said, I learned to play against bigger, stronger, more physical players. But she was actually the MVP of that boys' league. She said that's where she gets a little bit of her swagger from, her toughness from. And she said she finally had to switch over to girls' basketball when it was getting too tough. But she has retained some of that toughness and personality that she learned with the boys as a little kid. Now playing against the practice player guys every day in practice and we called the Iowa game earlier this season where we got to watch practice and the way she talks trash to those guys and just competes with them. It's awesome. Well, you can tell there's tremendous confidence in all parts of her game. Inside that three-point line, but a miss. Iowa's got a big first half out of Kate Martin. Crowd wanted to travel there. Holmes inside where she lives and breathes. Really good job corralling the basketball as Clark came over to help. Sonata gives it up. Here's Clark off the front iron. I thought they had a couple opportunities to get the ball into Stolke inside. Moore McNeil through the paint and a foul. But Chloe Moore McNeil has had a fantastic season. She said the reason she's improved so much is her confidence. She's getting an opportunity and she's shining. She's from a very small town, Sharon, Tennessee. She said she's doing everything she can to make sure that her three little sisters have a great quality of life. She is looking to become an ultrasound tech and she's taking some really tough classes right now. Chemistry, um, let's see, what was the other one? Human movement, she is taking a full academic load. Jumper on the way, that won't drop for Stolke. Indiana with an opportunity here to take the lead on this possession late in the second quarter. Berger with a jump pass. Shot clock it in. Berger got it. So less than two to go before halftime. Clark on the way. No. Second effort here for the Hawkeyes. Warnock gives it up. Clark dishing underneath. What a great pass. And a finish by Warnock. Anytime you play with a player who can get you wide open layups, it's a good thing. 
<laughs> okay, McKenna Ward up. In the lane. And the whistle here with 122 on the clock. By the way, you guys were phenomenal on game day. Uh, th that was an entertaining show, and the crowd was so into it. It's been so much fun here in Iowa. A great broadcast. Getting us ready for this one. Indiana leading it by one. So Iowa trying to retake the lead. Lisa Bluter putting a play on. That was an interesting stomp in her foot yeah. with the horns in the air, right? right. Have to know the genesis of that. <laughs> Five to get off the shot. They want Clark to touch it. Clark with a runner, banks it in. All variety of shots. Time for a heave here. Berger with an opportunity gets it up and away, but it won't go. And at halftime, it's exactly the game we anticipated in so many ways. With Iowa leading by one, 40 to 39. Indiana briefly had the lead back. Chloe um, McNeil's player is coming off of her to double homes in the post. They said they've got to make a quicker decision to pass out to Chloe or make her the diver. So quicker decisions, not so tentative for Mackenzie Holmes here in the second half. Yeah, we saw it late in the second quarter. There was one time where they had more McNeil dive to the basket, and I think she got to the free throw line on that possession. Clark on the baseline off the hesitation. It hits the deck and draws the whistle. They're going to get Holmes for number two. Her second foul as Clark buries the first one. And makes the pair. Berger to the lane, slamming on the brakes. Or McNeil, short jumper, no. Both sides cold right away. Clark with a scoop, went right to the cup for two. And give her 18. Actually 20 now. Holmes had it off the hand. On the turnover. Here's Martin in the paint. Drops in two. Here's Parrish. She drops in a three. So important for Indiana to be able to spread the D, to be able to hit from the outside. Only three of 13 on the day from three. Four point game and a whistle. Give the big girls some credit on that one. A little contact there. Clark just bounces off that, drops it in, and she'll go to the line. And look at the emotion from the Player of the Year candidate. That's suppressing a grin there. She gets to the free throw line. Not a lot of contact there, but a lot of fire. Moore McNeil with number three, incidentally. Clark looking for another three point play. Not this time. You know, you just did a promo for the Big 12. When we're talking to Carrie Moore this morning, she called her conference the Big. You think the Big 10 owns the rights to <laughs> the Big? Might rub them the wrong way, you're right. <laughs> Here's all with a miss, but a whistle and a foul on the deck. And the crowd doesn't like this at all. Kate Martin is furious. That's going to be four. Yeah. I'm sorry, three. And it takes her out of the game. She comes out on the swing. Holmes can't convert. 48-42. Clark. Oh, he's so wary about her stopping way outside that three-point line, but that's going to be switched in. Nothing but net by Warnock. She can hit that shot. 41% from three. Parrish into the paint. A lot of contact. And two, and count that. She'll be at the line. One thing about Indiana in particular this year is the size they have at the guard spot allows them to get in the paint. Yeah, it has been a long time since Indiana won a Big Ten championship. That puts a little perspective on it. Yeah, for some of us, Holly, that was just yesterday. <laughs> that feels pretty darn car. How about that for a mobile phone? There was nothing mobile about no, that phone. No, there wasn't. I think it's also... Uh...
hanging probably in the houses of some 30-year-olds. 50-year-olds? 50-year-olds, there you go. Warnock trying to go to work, led into a red wall there, and denied. Great defense by Holmes, and got the block. Now they will swing it. Warren McNeil, sweet from three-point range. Yeah, they needed that one too. She needed that one. Holly, some atmosphere in here today. It's been incredible. It's been incredible, and the Iowa fans have done a great job. But not only that, we've got about 40 fans from um, supporting the Hoosiers. They've come all the way from Mason City, Iowa, because um, Sheffield's mom was, excuse me, Sheffield's mom was smart enough to get tickets before it sold out. This game sold out about three weeks in advance. And so her mom was smart, Amy, who played at Valparaiso. Just a little pocket of red up there, a little tiny pocket of red. <laughs> but loud. We can hear him from time to time. A little tiny pocket's better than no pocket at all, Dave O'Brien. Definitely. Clark. Oh, shit. Everybody. And the foul, too. What a cagey play. Bringing the defender with her. Oh, cradles the basketball and finishes. Holmes with number three. Yeah, the three-point play. Nobody else even close at his number one in Division One. Holmes, by the way, scoreless in the quarter. Berger with a misfire. All the momentum belongs to the Hawkeyes right now. Will it keep on coming? It will. Mark from the corner. She shook off that foul and drops in a long one. Or McDeal with an answer from three-point land. Big time answer. Big time answer. Mark with a bounce. And a whistle. Sonano got hit. With 218 to go in the quarter. When she got her third, they took her off the primary responsibility of defending Caitlin Clark, but she is their best perimeter defender. She has been very important and impactful here in the third quarter, making shots from three. That is huge. Yeah, just hit a couple of back-to-back -back triples. Iowa opens it up a little bit now. 59-51. Indiana has won 14 straight games. Berger is sweeping into the paint. And two. Man, she's tough, huh? Yes. Unflappable. Holmes grabbing a rebound. Kenzie Holmes with the staggering statistic of making 69% of her shots. She gets the ball a lot right there and will draw the foul. And head to the line with a minute 39 left in the third. Holmes 70% at the foul line. Dave, you mentioned Holmes shooting 69%. She has not shot under 50% in a single game last season. Long. I see numbers like that. You know, great players do great things. Some of them are greater than others. Barish got knocked down. It has got physical. Marshall will swing it. Sonata goes back outside. Martin, who's had a hot day, gave it up that time. Got a good look at. Shot by Warnock doesn't drop. And approaching a minute to play in the quarter. Go to Holmes. Try to get another foul on Monica Sonano. Berger again to her right and two more. So this is a three-point game. The back iron. Indiana crashing the glass. There's own came away with it. Berger heating up. You can tell she's seeking the basketball through the lane. Had to save it. Get it for Holmes. On command. She'll work to her right. And yes. Right. You put not only Monica Sanano in a tough defensive position, but that could have been probably called a foul sure. as well. Put her right on her hip. One point game. In a game that has totally lived up to all the hype. Back off the window and a foul, a blocking foul. 3.8 in the quarter. Clark with 35 the first time they met, along with 10 assists, but she's looking for a different ending. First one went 87 78, Indiana. Who has had a legendary career. Here's Berger to heave it. And that's the end of the third. That sets up a dynamite fourth, 61-58. As we get 
The fourth quarter underway and anybody's game. It's been exactly what we anticipated in this highly touted game. You guys, in that last Iowa huddle, Lisa Bluter just reset everything for her team. She reminded them they've got four timeouts here. Use one to avoid a turnover. Then she challenged them to do better on the boards, boxing out, and turn up that heat on Grace Berger. They think that number 34 is getting too hot. She's got a special defense in. In the final seconds in front of this great crowd, Holmes weaving in for two. Look like Iowa last couple of possessions in that zone defense, and Berger does a jo great job attacking it and finding an open teammate. Marshall sticks it. Gabby Marshall, senior from Cincinnati. And up to six for the Hawkeyes. Burger surrounded. Parrish open. Yes. Indiana has shooters, and they have shooters with size. Sidney Parrish, 6'2", Yarden Garzone, 6'3", so it's hard to limit their vision when they catch and get an open field for a three. Parrish also a very good rebounder. Clark with a one-hander off the backboard. And it continues to pile on the points. She's got 31. Berger, that went right through Holmes. The open shooter is Scalia. And a whistle along the baseline. Kate Martin with foul number four. So it's 32 career games with 30 or more. Martin to the bench. Berger swishes that one in. Mid-range game is a sight to behold for her. Clark with a turnover. Berger. And a foul here inside with 6.56 to go. Arizona drops in the first one. But she's been impressive. She's had some really impactful moments on the defensive end with her size, helping, rebounding. It really hits the three when she gets going. So this is a one point affair. Here's Clark. Long one. Too strong. The occasions where she does miss a shot like that, she'll often drop her hands and stare at them like I can't believe it. <laughs> How did you fail me? And McNeil denied in the lane. Parrish is open again and drills another three. And that puts Indiana on top 70 to 68. Sydney Parrish is an outstanding three-point shooter. 36% on the season. She continues to find herself wide open. And a timeout. Iowa takes one as they trail here in the fourth quarter. Talked about what Iowa has on the line. This Indiana team showing great mental toughness, along with other things like great balance. And out of the corner, Marshall will drop that one in. That entire possession, Dave, she was over there clapping her hands like, I am ready and want the ball. One of the great things about this matchup, we got a lot of players who want the ball. Yeah. That's going to be a foul that will go against Indiana. Clark needed one rebound, two assists for her 10th career triple-double. Clark will swing it. And close in one. Sedano getting it exactly where she wants it. So another assist for Clark. She was held to six points and in foul trouble when they met in Bloomington. She's really lived up to her preseason pre all big 10 selection. Indiana has had an answer. Harris tried to swing it. Picked off. Davis will lay it in. She tried to double dribble that midcourt. I think may, may have gotten she, away with that. She double dribbled that midcourt. Morgan McNeil on the penetration. Yes. Marshall beyond the three. Davis. And Holmes there for the rebound. And the crowd hanging on every possession here at Carver Hawkeye. See Gabby Marshall just trying to deny anything back to Grace Berger once she gets rid of it.
Parrish on the attack. Yes, two more. Boy, she's had a big second half. And not only hitting from three, which is her bread and butter. Parrish with the foul a moment ago. Here's Martin out high. He's had such a big impact on this one, and she's about to go to the foul line. Dave Martin, where she makes 82%. One of Iowa's five returning starters from last year's Big Ten co-champs. Let's go to Holly. Well, Kate Martin is an absolutely wonderful story. She has had a relationship with Lisa Bluter since she was a tiny girl. She's been coming to Iowa Hawkeye camp since she was five years old. She's done every single year since she was five. She said it's a dream come true to be playing in black and gold. I never thought I'd be here, but every waking moment on the basketball court, I was working towards putting on this jersey. And here she is in one of the biggest games of her career, having a great game. Yeah, dream come true, really. You can see the passion with which she has played today. When she got in foul trouble, had to leave the game. She was fiery. 77-74. 19 points for Martin. So she has blown her season average away. Parrish has that one blocked. Still digging and draws the foul. And it'll be Parrish at the line. A former Indiana Miss basketball. The Oregon transfer. Had a slew of excellent games in her return to her home state. What a showcase for women's basketball. <laughs> totally. From game day to the game, this has been awesome. Wonderful thing when the stars play like stars. Warnock with a bounce speed, and yes. Sonano, the 6 3 grad, makes it 79 76. This crowd has been a huge part of the narrative, haven't they? Two twenty left. Berger to Holmes, yeah, and a whistle as well, with a chance to tie this game with a little more than two minutes. So we are dead even at seventy nine. Warnock looking. Here's Clark. Clark on the drive off balance. Oh, it spun out. Oh, it was in the cylinder and kicked out. So now the Hoosiers can jump into the lead. Under two minutes to play. Grace Berger with a jumper. Around and out. Well, that one was inside. A couple of great players getting looks they wanted. Scoring wise, among the starters, you got four players today who are into double figures. See two, they're running two now at Caitlin Clark. Clark outside the three. Doesn't need a lot of room, that's for sure. Here's Martin. What a pass. Sonata commits. To that play time and time again and gets it to go. 107 to go. Berger. Holmes. Yes. Keep going back to it. Whether it's the on ball screen or handoff between Grace Berger and Mackenzie Holmes, it's very hard for Iowa to defend. 81 apiece. This has been some game. Sonata went down and a whistle there in the paint. 48.7 showing. Four fouls now, Mackenzie Holmes. Sonano at the line. 77% foul shooter. And the 6 3 grad makes both of those. And it's 83 81. For McNeil, taking a tumble and fouled. So fouls were listed wrong in the arena. That's big. Yes. She could end up needing that timeout in these last 35 seconds. Absolutely. 
Norman Deal, 85%, outstanding at that line. Very cool there. So the Hawkeyes to put it in. So this one has a little bit of everything down the stretch. Caitlin Clark in a tie game under 30. Remaining to be played. Martin. Caitlin Clark, the All-American, taking her time. 11 on the shot clock. Martin looking up at that. Clark to make a move. Feeding inside, and that'll roll off the iron. Five seconds to go, and a timeout. Indiana with 4.6, and an opportunity to get up a shot to win the game. Sonato could not have gotten a better look for Iowa. Berger's going to put it in. Direct entry. Holmes. Holmes with two seconds, spinning inside, and a whistle on the play. Wow. And Mackenzie Holmes about to go to the line in a tie game with less than a second. Lisa Bluter wants a foul, uh, a travel. It looked like she did shuffle her feet a little bit. Was there a foul there, Dave? Sonato gets whistled for it. And you see Bluter there begging for a travel. This is still very hot about that one. And it looks like she had a right to be. Yes. I'll give you one more look. Direct entry, inbound. Get it to Holmes. She goes right here. Yeah, it was almost like when it looked like her right ankle went over a little bit. She had to get an extra step in there. So they're going to reset the clock to 1.5. Indiana has been outstanding at the foul line. 14 out of 15. Again, Holmes makes 70%. And Indiana has the lead. And she has another foul shot to come. And she makes the pair. The Hoosiers lead it 85 83 in a timeout. Keep your eye on number 22. Martin looking. Here's Clark. She fires and it goes! She hit it! Wow! When Caitlin Clark has the basketball like that, Iowa screen, another screen. More McNeil trying to get around, runs into Sonato, and just look at that off balance going to the right. Doesn't matter if everyone knows whose hands it's supposed to be in. Magic happens when magic happens, and we've seen it a lot with Caitlin Clark. And a legendary career adds another page in the legend.